Hey guys, and welcome to my Diana Jungle Guide. A lot of people have been asking me how I like to play Diana Jungle, so I decided to make a 5 minute video going over all of the basics. So let's get right into it. Starting off, let's look at the runes that I use for Diana Jungle. I have two rune pages that both work very well. One is an early mid game focused rune page, whereas the other one is a little bit more late game focused. This is my early mid game page for Diana. I run 3 AP quints, 9 times marks of attack speed, 9 times armor seals, and 9 times glyphs of flat AP. This, on the other hand, is my late game Diana page. I run 2 movement speed quints, 1 AP quint, 9 times attack speed marks, 9 times scaling armor seals, 9 times scaling AP glyphs. The second page is what I like to use most of the time when I'm playing on my main because of my playstyle, which has a heavy focus on farm. The first page, though, is definitely what I'd recommend for most people. This is the mastery page that I pretty much stick to when playing Diana Jungle. It's 12 18 0. I really enjoy the burst that you get with Thunderlord's Decree in the Cunning Tree, and I go Bounty Hunter mainly because once I get going, I very quickly snag kills on almost every member on the enemy team. Let's look at the skill order for Diana Jungle. The general consensus is to max Q, then W, then E. Level up R at 6, 11, and 16. What I like to do is I like to start W. Then I put a point in my Q at level 2 and a second point in W for a healthier clear. Afterwards, at level 4, I pick up my E and then I go back to maxing my Q. Diana has a few combos that you want to make sure you have down before you take her into the jungle. Q plus R before Q hits. If your Q collides, your R will reset. What you do is you throw your Q out and then ult to the target you think your Q is going to hit. As long as the Q debuff is active, even after you hit them with your ultimate, your ultimate will reset. There's also Q plus R before Q hits W midair. This allows for more burst damage, plus you'll have the shield. Additionally, you can also use your E when you land to provide some CC and slows. Another combo I want to talk about is R plus WQ midair. When fed, there is no counterplay to this combo. You don't reset your ultimate with this combo, you just initiate with your R and then press W and Q as soon as you collide with them. You can also R plus Q midair, and if you actually have low enough ping, you can make it so your ultimate will reset with your R. I don't actually have any footage with this because I don't believe my ping is low enough, but I've had it happen a couple times randomly in games. Uh, there's also Q plus R plus R, which is really, really critical. Really, really critical when you're going in for ganks because some, it allows you to gap close really, really easily. Very similar to how like Akali ultimate works when you're going in for a gank or an initiate. Let's talk item builds. There are three items that are core on Diana Jungle. Runic Echoes, Abyssal Scepter, and Zonia's Hourglass. The rest of your items are flexible. Whenever you play Diana Jungle, you need to build these three items. Abyssal Scepter synergizes well with her kit due to the MR reduction and a radius around her, and Zonia's Hourglass allows for outplay potential and provides safety for a champion that only can go in. This is how I personally build Diana Jungle. I almost always take Red Smite plus Runic Echoes for the damage reduction plus burn effect. Afterwards, I build Lucidity Boots for the CDR on spells and summoner spells. I then build Nasher's Tooth, an item that I am a big fan of due to the synergy with Diana's passive as well as the CDR that it provides. Overall, with Nasher's Lucidity Boots, I get 40% CDR as long as I have blue buff. Then I build Abyssal Scepter or Zonia's Hourglass depending on who's fed, but I build both eventually. My last item is a flex item. Sometimes I'll go Iceborne Gauntlet, Lich Bane, maybe even Rabadon's Deathcap, or Rylai's Crystal Scepter. All are good picks. So what happens in the early game? In the footage that we're looking at right now, you'll notice that I didn't purchase any health potions and I'm not picking up any of my buffs. This is a jungle route popularized by Valkyrin, a popular streamer. This jungle route involves going from Gromp to Wolves to Raptors to Krugs. This is a reverse for the other side of the map. Afterwards, you recall and complete your jungle item, then you proceed to repeat the same route but include the buffs this time. After you recall and clear two camps, you'll hit level 6 at around 6 minutes with doubles still acting active, allowing for a powerful level 6 gank. It is possible that you may lose the buff from an invade by leaving it up, but it's worth the trade off if it pans out. Remember that buffs don't give as much experience as they used to pre-jungle rework. Losing a buff is about the same as a normal camp. In this clip, you'll see me hit level 6 with doubles and security kill. Diana's main power spikes are when she hits level 6, when she acquires runic echoes, and when she acquires her two core items in Abyssal and Zonias. Level 6 allows you to utilize your ultimate for large burst, Runic Echoes adds onto that burst with Skirmisher Saber, and is very difficult to trade with no matter what jungler you're playing against. And Abyssal and Zonias allows for even more burst plus safety, making you pseudo tanky with the resistance that they provide, and providing high damage. So let's talk about Diana's neutral objective control. She can solo Dragon fairly easily early on in the game, though I tend to wait until later in the game to do it to avoid setting myself behind. 
uh, due to the fact that I have a heavy, like I said, I have a heavy focus on farming, and to do, do dragon, like, you know, level 3, level 4, tends to put you behind, like, a significant amount, so it's better to wait for a little bit to be able to get it. She can also solo Rift Herald post Runic Echoes very, very easily and very, very quickly. In fact, I, I almost every single game, I'll get Rift Herald maybe, like, around, like, 12, 13 minutes, just, like, whenever I feel like it. Uh, depending on the other champion, she can also duo Baron fairly easily with high DPS, especially if you run the Nasher's Tooth build. My style of jungling has a very heavy focus on farm. This works especially well when playing Diana and gaining a massive lead over the enemy team. Looking at the stats post-game, you'll notice that I have 193 CS to the enemy jungler's 71, and I have a 4 level lead at 24 minutes. I do have a lot of kills, but I backed up the kills with golden experience from farm as well. It's imperative to have both. Whenever, whenever I'm playing jungle, I am always farming. If a camp is up, I'm farming it. If there's CS in mid lane and no one's taking it, I'm farming it. This is one of the main methods for getting a huge lead on the enemy jungler. Teamfights are fairly straightforward as Diana. Assuming you focused heavily on farming and getting a huge lead on the enemy players, approaching your first teamfight, you should already have a sizable lead on their squishies. Use your combo, Q plus R, W and mid air to blow up their squishies instantly. If you get fed enough, use your R to initiate and plus press W plus Q mid air to one shot, aka the no counter play kill. If you're not fed, try to use your combo as frequently as possible in teamfights. Another possibility is to initiate with Q plus R and use your E to knock up multiple people on the enemy team, then proceed to pop Zonia's hourglass before you get blown up. Now the number one question. How do you actually win the game? Realistically, you have to figure out how to snowball. As Diana, what you're going to be mainly focusing on is farming. But, you don't just AFK farm. You do have to, like, show up whenever something is occurring nearby. So what normally happens when I'm playing in my games is I'll focus mainly on farming. Whenever I see the enemy jungler show somewhere on the map, I immediately, like, I register that this in my head. And I try to figure out where I think he's going to be going next. So once I'm like, once I've accumulated the lead from farming, I'll try to find them either in a 1v1 scenario post level 6 for a solo kill or go for a counter gank by anticipating where he's going to go next. Doing this will garner even more and more gold and if you secure kills you can then farm his jungle as well as their own jungle. At this point, you'll have garnered a massive lead over the entire enemy team in items and experiences that you can literally brute force end the game. And this is where the Zonias and the Abyssal comes in handy. You literally just QR onto the enemy team, blow like their entire squishies up, and if, you know, if there's an off chance that you might actually die, you pop your Zonias Hourglass, and then you just kill them all with your QR again, assuming that your R didn't go on cooldown. At this point, at 20-25 minutes, you ace bow and you push, down, push an absurd amount of turrets down. If you decided to go with the Nasher's Tooth build, you have an absurd amount of pushing power with the Nasher's Tooth as well. So that's basically generally how I win the games. Alright guys, thank you guys for watching, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is my first time doing a jungle guide, or any type of guide for that matter, so let me know if you guys actually enjoyed the content. Uh, I'll be happy to make more in the future, especially if you, depending on the feedback that I receive for this, otherwise I'll probably stick to the A to Z series. Um, but yeah, hopefully this guide proves useful for you guys. A lot of you guys have been asking about my Diana jungle because, you know, it is one of the champions that, I, that got me to master last season, I've been having a blast playing it. Uh, Alright guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. The next video is probably going to be an A to Z series video. It's going to be my, uh, I believe it's going to be Fizz Jungle. And I will see you guys then. Bye!